In late February 2022, a user on a popular internet forum posted something peculiar. An encounter with some manner of large, bipedal, inhuman, goat-like creature in the British countryside. What made the sighting all the more strange was that it was posted to Mumsnet, a website created in 2000 to facilitate discussion between parents and, as such, one of the very last places one might expect to run into something otherworldly. And yet, the being described in the post shared by the user Galloping High Road comes across as just that. Furthermore, it quite possibly hints at a wider weirdness, with the area in which they allegedly encountered the mysterious creature home to many strange and spooky secrets. My name is Laura, and you are watching The Paranormal Scholar. In the world of the paranormal, it seems as though there's always some manner of strange and monstrous creature lurking in the shadows. Whether it be on a moonlit road in the early hours of the morning, or on your mobile devices. And with Raid Shadow Legends, such villainous monsters truly are everywhere. Completely free to play on both mobile and PC, Raid is a tactical turn-based MMO battle game that takes you to Teleria, a fantastical realm under a shadow cast by the Dark Lord, Siroth. Brimming with lore, this dark fantasy world is home to nearly 700 unique collectible champions, whose task through you is to battle and defeat dreadfully powerful bosses, including the Demon Lord and the Hydra. I especially enjoy the devilish details of these diabolical baddies. With a strong focus on hero collection, Raid offers billions of ways to customise and build your champions, with whom you can crush boss battles, master dungeon runs, conquer the main campaign, and even take on real players in PvP battles. And with regular tournaments and events, the action is non-stop. There'll always be a new challenge to conquer and in-game rewards to win. Not only this, Raid's got something extra special happening right now. They've released a legendary champion based off MMA and pro wrestling legend Ronda Rousey. Whether you're a new or a long time player, you can get Ronda free right now just by logging into Raid. All you've got to do is log in and play Raid for 7 days between now and February 28th and Ronda is yours. Also, if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can get exclusive rewards in Raid right now. To celebrate Ronda's arrival in Raid, you can also use the special promo code RAIDRONDA to get even more freebies, all of which are perfect for levelling your Ronda up. And if that's not enough to tempt you, there's even more. New players, use my link or scan the QR code on screen and get a free starter pack worth almost $30, a free champion Tayral, and all this incredible in-game loot. You'll find your rewards here in your inbox for the next 30 days only. Thank you for listening and supporting Raid, who, through their sponsorship, helps make my content possible. Now, on with the video. It was around 2am in the morning of Sunday the 20th of February, and the user, who appears to be a man, was driving home with his partner after a few nights away. They were approaching home, travelling along a stretch of the A425 near the Northamptonshire village of Staverton, when something supposedly crossed the road in front of them. Illuminated by the headlights of their car for about three seconds, it was said to have been about the height of a person, maybe six feet or over. Dark brown in colour, with short, powerful legs and hips which seemed to move in a circular fluid fashion, it walked upright, had the quality of a thin bear, droopy shoulders, and what appeared to be hands curled back towards its body. It also had, so the user explained, a goat head. In short, it was distinctly non-human. The user then went on to provide a sketch of what he had seen, expressing how he was certain it was something inexplicable. Nothing so far in terms of an explanation really fits the bill, he wrote. Not merely that, this was not the first time he had seen something strange in the area, for, according to his forum testimony, he once saw something else very strange too, disappearing up across the fields behind the house and into the woods. And certainly before too long, others came forward also claiming to have encountered inexplicable entities along or close to the same stretch of road. 
I live within a mile of that exact piece of road, another user commented on the thread many months later, in September 2022. They explained how they were driving westwards on the 19th of September at around 7pm when they also witnessed something they described as spooky. On a wide piece of grass verge, something was standing on its hind legs. It was, so they explained, long and thin. Fear reportedly got the better of them, and so they accelerated away before they were able to get a better look at it. In their own words, I had this feeling, like from someplace else, to get the heck out of there. Did this user see the same strange thing as the original poster? For certainly, the stretch of the A425 mentioned by both people can be said to be a peculiar location. Cutting through nothing but fields for several miles, the road is indisputably rural, and thus unlikely to attract 2am ramblers, with a lay-by referenced by the original poster situated just outside the tiny village of Lower Chakra. Intriguingly, this place, which as of 2001 had a population of less than 100 people, seems to have once been regarded with some significance. Mentioned as early as the 11th century, its name, Shakbra, finds its origins in the Old English Sukeborg, meaning goblin or demon hill. Why this otherwise idyllic English village was named such, we do not know. And so one must ask, does the reason lie in the existence of otherworldly inhabitants? After all, there seems to be plenty of local testimonies alleging experiences with the inexplicable. One local claims to have encountered a big pale shape akin to a person just standing dead still in the middle of the road. As soon as the high beam headlights of their car illuminated the area, the ethereal figure vanished. There was no sign of, or indeed no reason for there to have been, anyone there. Another online testimony again describes how, only a few minutes drive away from the original incident, an odd man was seen standing in a deep ditch with just his head and shoulders visible. He was said to have been grinning ear to ear. It was 5am in the morning. Odder still, only seconds before, the driver of the car, a woman travelling to her hospital shift, had supposedly seen a string of lantern-like lights snaking parallel to the hedge before suddenly disappearing. And so, there appears to be no shortage of eerie happenings within reach of Demon Hill. Returning to the original February encounter, there have been attempts to explain the sighting. Some who posted in the forum thread at the time pointed out that wallabies, the small kangaroo-like marsupials, have been seen throughout the region. Believed to have escaped from a private collection, a rare white wallaby, nicknamed Colin for the frequency with which he is spotted, was photographed some 20 miles away as recently as seven days before the supposed goat man encounter. And yet, whilst wallabies are most certainly an odd but not uncommon sight in the British countryside, with a spokesperson for the RSPCA saying that the Australian native animals are now considered established in the wild in Britain, they can be said to be very much unlike the description provided by the man who claimed to have seen the Staverton Goatman. 100% not a wallaby or kangaroo, he wrote at the time. What he saw in the early hours of the 20th of February was different and much taller. Other theories put forward in an attempt to explain the sighting include that of an escaped alpaca or deer with chronic wasting disease walking on its hind legs. And whilst this may at first seem a strange suggestion, male deer in particular are known to walk on two legs when fighting predators or asserting dominance within a herd with an article published by Scientific American even stating that some are surprisingly proficient at bipedal standing and walking. Taken within the context of the sighting location being close to a deer park, this theory seems quite supportable indeed. And yet, such does not explain the supposed goat head seen by the witness, neither does it address the area's wider reputation for weirdness. After all, once again considering the nearby village's name, Lower Shukpur, one finds another intriguing connection, to that of Old Shuk, a folkloric beast most often encountered in the form of a spectral black dog. 
said to roam the countryside all across the British Isles, with the entity being known by many other names, including the Grim, Freybug, and Padfoot. It, like the village also, finds its etymological origin in the Old English word for demon, devil, goblin, or fiend. In this way, far from simply being the ghost of a once living canine, the Shuck is thought of as a demonic entity of immense size, whose appearance often foreshadows death. The hellish monster is equally said to cause people to fall ill, be able to pursue their victims unheard, and even shapeshift. Considering this, might the identity of the being encountered by Demon Hill, if not normal, be that of the paranormal Shuck? Certainly, a ten minute drive brings you to the village of Braunston, and yet another creepy creature encounter. This time, the sighting linked to an old inn, the entity alleged to have been seen is described as a phantom dog. Rumoured to have been witnessed by a former manager of the establishment, it can be said to be reminiscent of old Shuck folklore. Then, less than ten miles away from the inceptive incident, there is the tale of the Black Dog of Prince Thorpe. Associated with a stretch of road just outside the village, the supernatural creature is claimed to appear at midnight, to cast misfortune upon all those who encounter it. Similar again are the Hellhounds of Whittlebury. Located southeast of the A425, these legendary beasts are associated with the Wild Hunt. The folkloric motif, which sees a supernatural chase comprising spectral warriors and hellish, phantasmal canines attempting to pull people's souls from their bodies so as to join them in their eternal blood sport. Thus, a brief dip into the folklore of Demon Hill and its surrounding area, and one finds an entire carnival of demonic creatures. But what of Goatman? Does such an entity exist within supernatural tradition? The most well-known alleged appearance of a man-goat figure can be said to have been in 1970s America, in particular in Prince George's County, Maryland. Although widely dismissed as an urban legend, at the time and indeed still, many attributed a series of canine disappearances and deaths to the legendary monster. According to a 12th of December 1971 article published in the Austin American, one victim of the Maryland Goatman was a 10-month-old dog called Ginger. It was reported that she was found within a two-mile stretch of dense woods in the northeast of the county, commonly associated with the monster. Or rather, her head was. Described as decapitated cleanly at the neck, the tragic animal's body was never discovered. Some attributed her death to a railway accident. Others whispered that Goatman was responsible. Within the University of Maryland's archives, there are said to be many references to the state's horrible human goat chimera, with the district commander for the local police force at the time even stating that it was not unusual for his department to receive phone calls every once in a while regarding an encounter. Whilst he conceded that some were obviously pranks, many came from strictly rural areas where, so he expresses, uneducated folk had not yet learned the error of believing in nonsense stories. And whilst descriptions of the Maryland Goatman have varied over the years, the entity is commonly claimed to be about the size of a man, covered with fur, bipedal, and possessing a human face. Given its reputation for attacking beloved family pets, it is said to be violently malevolent or so, and so potentially similar to the spooky bipedal figure which caused the motorist of earlier to flee in fear from Demon Hill. Elsewhere in the United States, similar man-goat monsters are said to exist. For example, in the Fisherville area of Louisville, Kentucky. Known as the Pope Lick Monster, this incarnation of Goatman is reported to live below a creek-spanning railway trestle bridge, arguably much the same as how, in old European folklore, trolls are feared to lurk under bridges. However, unlike its Maryland cousin, the Louisville Goatman is not generally linked to any particular sightings or incidents, meaning some have suggested that it is much less likely to be a flesh and blood monster, and more likely a figure of pure myth and legend. 
But regardless, such stories beyond the British Isles do prove something, that the concept of a man-goat monster is very possible within the human psyche. Mankind across all ages has not merely been able to entertain the notion of, but envisage and cast in art, human-animal hybrids. It is indeed somewhat of a strange obsession, a macabre melding of man and beast. In Greek mythology, there was the Minotaur, the Harpy, the Centaur, and the Gorgon. Today, there is Goatman. What is the reason for this? Is it because of our fantastical imagination, a childish desire to see the world as more magical than it really is? Or does some primitive part of us know, for whatever reason, that such composite creatures are possible? Eerily, one detail from the Staverton Goatman case seems to lend itself to this concept. When describing his experience, the original poster offered to provide a sketch of what he had seen. However, time and technical frustrations prevented him from immediately uploading his drawing. And thus another user, another local who also alleged a bizarre but not Goatman sighting on the same area of road, offered to draw an image in his place. Using the original poster's testimony, she pulled together the various aspects of the sighted creature, much the same as a police sketch artist would produce an image of a suspected criminal. The results were, according to the original poster, shocking. That's perfect, he wrote, and better than my drawing. So chilled by the likeness to what he had seen was he, that he even said to the artist, are you sure you haven't seen it already, and it's in your subconscious? Bizarre and unsettling. Why would a horrific Goatman hybrid already be known to another person living in the area? And so is this what was encountered on the A425 in February 2022. By the end of the forum thread, many, including the original poster, were happy to conclude that, while spooky in the small hours of the morning, the being was most likely an upright deer, perhaps with some brambles or something wrapped around its legs, doing something really weird. And so strange, but not supernatural. And yet, given the legend of the shape-shifting black shuck, the ancient reputation of nearby Demon Hill, and all that has been buried, even subconsciously within our collective minds, in terms of human-animal hybrids, the truth might be even stranger than most of us would think. Thank you for watching, I truly hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing for more of the paranormal. Equally, you might like to sign up to my email newsletter over on paranormalscholar.com to receive notifications of new videos straight to your inbox. And if you cannot wait for my next video, why not watch the one suggested on screen now? Until next time, 